Welcome back to this tutorial series introducing you to projection mapping in Resolume. This video will walk you through how to set up a projector as an output from Resolume, how to set up your input mapping and projection map the front 10 faces of a 5 tier wedding cake. Your first step in outputting from Resolume to a projector is connecting the projector to your laptop or computer correctly. The way you connect your projector will depend on your system. I'm using a MacBook Pro and I am connecting my projector via a cable with a mini display port output from my MacBook to an HDMI input to my projector. Once your projector is connected, there are two ways in which your system can understand the projector as a mirror or as a secondary extended display. Set up as a mirror, the projector outputs what is on your screen. Sometimes this is what you want when you are giving a presentation at work, for example. But Resolume requires the projector to be set up in the second way, as a secondary or extended display. To do this on a Mac, go to your system preferences. These might be in your dock as they are for me, or they can be accessed via the Apple icon in the top left. Navigate to Displays, click on the Arrangement tab and uncheck Mirror Displays if it is selected. On a Windows PC, right-click on the desktop and go to Display Settings, or go to the Start menu and hit Settings, and then System. In the Display menu, down in the Multiple Displays section, choose Extend These Displays. In Resolume, in the Output menu, under Full Screen, select Display 2. Notice how the resolution of our secondary display is shown in brackets beside display 2. If you accidentally go full screen on display 1, you won't be able to access the controls. Hit Command Shift D on a Mac or Control Shift D on Windows to disable all output and get back to the interface. In many instances, we'll want to change the resolution of the composition to match our secondary display, in other words, our projector's resolution. We do this here in Composition, Composition Settings. Notice in the drop-down beside Size, Resolume tells us which resolution is optimal for our secondary display. Auto frame rates should be fine in most circumstances. Every video is made up of still images or frames that are played quickly in sequence. The frame rate determines how many still images play per second. Auto will sync the frame rate to your monitor's refresh rate there is no point setting this value higher than your output device is capable of. If you are experiencing performance issues, you could limit the frame rate to something lower, like 30 frames per second. Color depth allows you to switch between 8 and 16 bits per channel. 16 bits allows you to display more color information, but the difference is usually not really noticeable, and being at this color depth can impact performance. 8 bit is recommended for general use. If you've increased your resolution in your composition settings, you might find that your clips are now not filling the entire output window. You can go into the Clip Properties panel and hit Maximize, represented by this double-ended arrow icon. The aspect ratio will be maintained. That's the ratio of the clip's width to its height. The first click on Maximize will match the height to the composition resolution, but that might leave blank space either side. A second click on Maximize will match the width to the composition's resolution, so there is no blank space, but some cropping will now occur at the top and bottom. A third click on Maximize breaks the original aspect ratio, and both width and height will be stretched to fit the composition's resolution. See how the circle is no longer circular and the square has been stretched. You can also adjust the clip size manually by twirling down the clip properties and entering them manually. You can change the size of clips on a layer basis too, which is often quicker because it affects all clips triggered on that layer. Do this using the Auto Size feature, which has options Fill, Fit and Stretch, which correspond to the three types of sizing we just encountered in the clip properties. Fill will maintain the aspect ratio so no stretching and distortion will take place and will ensure that there are no areas left without content. Let's start a new composition.
Give it a name. I'm going to make mine 1080 by 1080. From the output menu, click Advanced. Click on screen 1 on the left and then head over to the right and select Display 2 from the drop down next to Device. Make sure the Input Selection tab is selected. You can change the zoom percentage from this drop down. You can also zoom in and out with Command, Plus, or Minus or two-finger scrolling up and down works on my trackpad. By holding down the spacebar and clicking, you can pan around the output viewport. I want to map each front face of the tiers separately. I'm going to need some sort of guide to help me do this. I could take a photo of the cake and load it into the input guide. This method can work in some circumstances, but it can be inaccurate due to the perspective and lens distortion present in a photo. The photo method works better for surfaces that you can photograph flat on, like the wall of a building, not surfaces like these that are at angles with one another. But even then it is an imprecise way of working. It is much better to work from accurate plans or knowledge you have of the dimensions of the physical object you are mapping to. If you are a VJ, you might be provided with specifications by the venue if you are mapping to a stage, for example. In my case, I know the dimensions of these tiers, and so I made myself a guide. I have included the guide as a free download in the description if you would like to use it too. Because my guide is 2048 by 2048 pixels in size, it is bigger than my comp of 1080 by 1080. So instead, I'm going to load my guide as a clip and use the auto size fill method we used a moment ago. This technique will also work as an input guide. In the input tab, adjust the slice so it fits around the top left tier. Rename it Left1 or L1. Alt drag on it to duplicate it, and that helpfully is named L2. Ensure Snap is enabled to help things line up perfectly. Do the same for all five tiers on the left side. Then select all the left slices and duplicate them over by alt dragging. Right click and select mirror X. Move them over to the right and into position. Move them to the top of the list of slices. Rename them R1, 2, etc. to mirror the naming convention on the left. Now move over to the Output Transformations tab. Make sure you are in Transform mode, then with all the slices selected, move them roughly to where the cake is. Then uncheck the visibility of all but L1. Select Edit Points, then, working by eye, pull the handles onto the corners of the top left tier face. You can do this using your mouse. You can also use arrow keys for fine movement. To move in bigger increments, hold Shift and use the arrow keys. Do this for all the slices by pulling them onto their respective tier faces. You can shift between edit points and transform mode by using the shortcut T.
Save your map as a preset by clicking on the preset drop down menu and choosing Save As. Now you can return to it whenever you need. Save and exit. Now if I load my own cake mapping content into the clip slot and trigger them, I can see that my mapping is set up correctly. Are you planning on giving cake mapping a try? Do you have any questions? Let us know in the comments down below. If this video helped you, please hit that like button. Hit subscribe to stay up to date with more cake mapping and projection mapping tutorials and videos.